G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. So, sad day evening here in Australia, obviously sad day morning over in the States and other places sort of around the world and, and you know, could be completely different times depending on where you are. But obviously we've had a bit of a retracement, you know, nothing too major. And I guess we're going to try and work out, you know, how far do we think we're going to fall? Are we going to see one of those 40% corrections that have been seen in previous markets or are we done yet? Look, I can tell you right now, I don't have a definitive answer because I just don't know. I'm not a, you know, savant. I can't tell the future. But there are some things that I'm looking at that will help uh, me make my decision about what I think is going to happen. So number one here, there's a very interesting article. Bitcoin whale clusters show these are the strong support levels. Whale clusters show that the key uh, short-term support areas for Bitcoin are 16,694, 16,411 and 16,064 dollars. So most, you know, cycles do play out very similar. We've got to stay away from the same because no two cycles are the same. They are different in all ways. And this cycle is different from other cycles. But it's not that different that it won't still play out similarly. Similarly, I can't even say that word. That it won't be similar is basically the easier way for me to say it. All right, and the reason this time is different is because institutional money is here and big institutional money is here. So that automatically changes it, but it doesn't mean it's changed so it's completely unlike any other cycle ever. But I think it will change about how big a dips we have. I still stand by what I said, and look, I could be proven wrong. I don't think we're going to see any really big dips, you know, those kind of 40%, 30% dips until later on in the price. But we've had around about a 17% dip uh, over the last sort of couple of days. And 17% is not bad, uh, you know, depending on how you want to look at it. It's not great if, you know, you were the one that lost 17%. But if you're looking for a buying opportunity, this might be a great one. And anyway, we'll get into all that, but let's have a look at this article a little bit further. Since topping out at $19,484, so that's basically the all-time high, it's not far off, Bitcoin has struggled to reclaim the $17,000 level. That's not true. It's sitting around $17,000. You know, it kind of to and froze from sixteen nine dollars to 17000 But anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, so, well, there we go. seventeen dollars to $18,000 level. Yeah, it hasn't been able to claim the 18000 As the price continues to decline, traders are targeting key underlying support levels to determine where traders will buy if Bitcoin price continues to fall. And this is what I was speaking about. The immediate support levels based on whale clusters are those prices I said before. And then even, look, you can go lower down to 15,355, 14,914, and 13,740 could serve as macro support areas. I would be surprised if we got down here. I think it'd just be too aggressively bought up. That's not to say it can't happen. I just don't see it happening. I think we're too early in the cycle. All the big money players, the institutional buyers, they're still buying, you know, building their positions right now. I couldn't see it getting down to there. I don't know who would sell enough Bitcoin uh, to push it down to that because there's just so much buying pressure at the moment. But the institutional players that are getting in now, they're not silly. Like if they've got $450 million to buy Bitcoin, they're not coming and just putting, putting one big massive order in. Again, I've spoke about this before. They're doing the micro strategy theory. So they're just bit by bit. They got their little buy orders. And every time Bitcoin dips down a little bit, then that'll trigger it to buy a little bit more. And so these prices will just continue to rise. It doesn't mean we can't have retracements. And look, we could have a big retracement. But I just don't know who would be willing to sell that much Bitcoin at the moment to push it down. Uh, not impossible because I just think it'd get bought up and unless they had some massive leverage uh, and even that's a dangerous game to play uh, at the moment with the amount of buying pressure. Yeah, they would just be losing it and they'd be short changing themselves. So we can see here, we can click on this. This is the support level. So obviously there was a ton that was buying back here and at the $12,000 range. And look, we'd be all over Bitcoin if it was 12000 right now. Well, at least we think we would. You can almost guarantee that if Bitcoin made it down to $12,000, people would be panicking, saying it's the end of the world, uh, and they'd all be selling, uh, and a lot of people would sell at a loss. Smart money, and maybe your smart money, 
wouldn't be selling. They would just simply be buying. Even if it went below $12,000, which I think is unlikely, you know, I think, yeah, I think it'd be bought up. We can see here again around that $13,000 level, big buying around about there and a number of, uh, you know, kind of bubbles that we can see there and then there's just gradually more buying and even up here look at seventeen thousand dollars there's been you know some sort of whale buying at bitcoin there and in between the sixteen thousand six hundred and seventeen thousand six hundred dollar level which is kind of where we are now so there's whales buying right now and i.e institutions and that so can bitcoin go you know down to thirteen thousand eight hundred it could do i think it's going to do it no, I don't think it's going to do it. I think the institutions are just chewing it up at the moment. But that's not to say people won't start selling some and taking profits. That's entirely possible. All right, so really, they're the levels that we've got to watch out for. Uh, you know, is it likely, sorry, we'll come back here again. Is it likely we go a long way under 17,000? No, probably not, because there's a lot of buying here. So I don't think they're selling. Look, people who bought down here might sell some to take some profits and who bought down here might sell some to take some profits but again it's unlikely they've probably got price targets that they're looking to uh, sell at later and unless they were liquidity short they needed some dollars that would really be the only reason that they're going to sell right now because they just know they simply need to hold and in a year's time you know who knows how much they could have made on their money but let's say bitcoin goes to two hundred thousand and you bought it at 12,000 and look, let's just round it down to 10,000. You've 20 extra money. Why would they sell now? It's just unlikely, not impossible. And again, look, they might sell bits of it because they're in profit and they're just taking some profit, nothing wrong with that. But I can't imagine that they're just gonna mass dump uh, when they know the price can go so much higher. Again, unless they got some kind of leverage plan or you know they're teaming up with other whales to dump prices really low and buy back in again, which again, you know, it, that's a dangerous game to play. So I really don't think we're gonna come down too much lower, but I could be completely wrong. I am not a financial advisor. Please don't take anything I say as financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. From the things I see in the market, my time being here, you know, three years, you know, kind of pushing on to sort of my fourth year, that's my personal opinion. We'll wait and see whether uh, I'm proven right or proven wrong. A lot of people are probably thinking, oh, you're proven wrong, there was a dump. I never, and it's not even a dump, it's a retracement. The 40% would be a dump, I would agree, that's a dump. I still don't know, it's not even no, I just don't think we're gonna have any 30, 40% retracements uh, before sort of 25-ish thousand dollars. Not to say it can't happen and it won't happen, I've been wrong before, I'll be wrong again. I just think it's aggressively being bought up too much. And that's why Bitcoin's sitting around 17,000 sort of dollars. But look, it's the weekend, there's always gonna be a retracement. It could continue on Monday and it could, you know, keep going down over the next few days. You know, the downturns in Bitcoin when it's having uh, retracements in a bull market, they last around about a week to sometimes two or three weeks. Most of them are around about a week. So we're already sort of halfway into it if it's going to last the average, which is about a week. So we'll have to wait and see whether there's more to come or whether we have bottomed out. But moving on, let's get over here. We'll refresh this. So this was 515,000 and Bitcoin was around $17,000. And it's been there for a while. It fluctuates between sort of 16, nine and 17,000. Still roughly sitting there, still roughly the same price. Gas prices, this is what we need to see. Nice and low. Again, we'd rather it be down in the single digits, but 13 is not too bad. BTC dominance sitting around 65, uh, 61%, sorry. And we can see, look, things still had massive moves. And again, seven days XRP and Stellar, like this just keeps going up. Now again, not financial advice, but maybe, you know, if you're looking to take some profits, now wouldn't be a bad time. You've doubled your money in the last seven days. And if you bought in earlier, then it's even more again. And again, it's it's 137% in the last few days. But if you're holding Stella long term, then, you know, just simply hodl. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But if you were looking to take some profits, this is probably not a bad time. Uh, and again, you know, you, you don't have to sell it all, but at 140%, let's round it up, you could basically, you know, take your profit out, 
uh, sorry, take uh, your initial investment out and then just let the rest of it ride. If you're a trader, that's a, a really, what they call a, a really good or a bloody good trade right there. If you're into trading, you know, you get into a coin, you know, in seven days, it, you know, one and a half X's, it's not too bad. And again, that's only the last seven days. We can see that it's been, you know, slowly tracking up for a while here. And well, this is just seven days. All right. Let's have a look. What were the big movers? Were there any big movers in the last 24 hours? There was. Numeraire. So not too bad for them. And again, they've been pumping really well. But it doesn't seem like they have had a dump. So a lot of these coins that haven't dumped, well, not so much dumped, but retraced too much in seven days, you know, could possibly be a good time to take profits unless you're a long-term investor. And if you are, then none of this matters anyway. And again, Stella's up there. Uh, but really, that's probably the best one, Numeraire. That's uh, on quite a tear, at least over the last 24 hours. What about losers? Are there any losers? There are, but there are only small losers, and we are going to have a look at these coins, uh, some of these coins very shortly. Ave, it's been coming down for a while, and I think it might be getting to a point where it's a really good buy. Same with Synthetics Token. But again, we have a look at these. These dips over the last 24 hours aren't too bad. Now, it's more these dips that I'm looking for. So seven days, they're down 21%. So while Bitcoin may not have retraced, you know, 30, 40%, some of these tokens have really retraced a lot. And again, this is just over the last seven days. I think they've come down even more. So that old saying, be greedy when people are fearful. People are fearful in coins like this at the moment. And... Uh, be fearful when people are greedy. When something's pumping, that's a time to you know consider selling. And again, please, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. So that's why I'm looking into these. They have you know done some heavy retracement, so I think it might be a really good time to get back into these. And again, we'll have a look at those soon. But again, most of these uh, losses over the last 24 hours, they're not too bad. They're single digits, you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah. What can you expect when things pump so hard uh, at other times? So let's have a look. All right, Aave. This is what I'm liking about Aave. So this is the new Aave coin, not the old Len token. Uh, they are two separate coins. So we can see, obviously it's been doing all right for a while again. And again, this is against Bitcoin. This is not against the dollar. You know, you can put it against the dollar or you can put it against Bitcoin. What I like to do is take a bit of a gander at both, uh, and I'll, it generally gives me a better picture, but we're just having a look at Bitcoin at the moment. So it's been outperforming Bitcoin, basically. Now, not always. Again, when you see the red, it's being outperformed by Bitcoin, and when you see it's green, it's outperforming uh, Bitcoin. So there we go. We can see it's in a general sort of uptrend, but we got to here, this was like the cycle high. We got in this channel. We needed to break the green for it to be positive and not break below this red for it to be negative. So again, we kind of, you know, dibble dabbled around here and then it broke to the upside. Now this white line is basically the neutral line and we're waiting to see if this is gonna hold a support. And we can see it's come back and bounced off here once and it's come back and sort of bounced off here twice. So I think this is gonna do a little bit of sideways action, well, I'm hoping, uh, before it starts to pump up uh, and do its you know next sort of move now again I could be completely wrong it wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong so I am expecting it to probably come down here bounce once or twice maybe even bounce up here come back retest this and then start to make its next move up but there's no guarantees that it does this it is quite possible that it rolls over comes hits this again and rolls over and goes lower again this is possible, and particularly if Bitcoin has a sell-off. If Bitcoin continues its sell-off, all of these are negated, and so we'll just have to wait and see. But what you can do is find some other support levels. Okay, where has Aave had support before? Down here, I don't know if it's gonna come down there, that'll be one hell of a correction. Uh, here, it's got some confluence, and even here, it's got a little bit of confluence. So down near the bottom end of, of this red line, but you have to do your own research and your own analysis. For me, I'm looking here and I don't think things, uh, I don't expect things to get 
uh, much worse if they do get any worse. I think we may have sort of found the bottom of this correction. Again, you know, sort of 17% correction. That's, you know, pretty reasonable for Bitcoin. And considering, you know, the institutions that are still getting into it and the institutional FOMO, as they call it, hasn't even started yet. That won't start until Bitcoin does break its old all-time highs. That's when institutions, again, will start to, you know, get into it. They'll be like, right, it's confirmed, it is happening. And again, it'll probably have to push above, come back and retest it and then go above again for, you know, certain institutions. But they're all there. And again, I've showed it over a number of videos before. PayPal's uh, still buying up crypto. Square Cash App's still buying it. Uh, Sky Ridge is, you know, getting into it and they're probably into it right now. Uh, you know, Grayscale and there's a number of, other, you know, companies that are out there. I don't think this is going to go down too far, but could be wrong. All right, here's another one that I think is looking really nice. Okay, so this is Chainlink against BTC. And we can see this has been the trend line here for a long, long time. It just keeps finding this trend line and bouncing off, bouncing off bouncing 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 before it explodes and look where we are now so we're in a bit of a channel here uh, and here's the red line that we don't want to break and look what's happening right here the red line and this blue line have met up so i am waiting to see if this is now going to start to bounce uh, up and break higher but look here's where it could go down to and if it's going to go down somewhere uh, it's quite possible this is where it goes because this it's had some confluence here before it's been here a couple of times before resistance resistance sort of resistance and then we broke out above and then we almost came back down to retest it but kept going higher so i think chain link at the moment is looking pretty sweet uh, i haven't pulled the trigger on any sort of big buys at the X because I'm big buys uh, yet as I'm still really waiting to see what's going to happen with the market and I think Monday will be a good indicator of what's going to happen whether we continue to go down or whether we finally go up but yeah it's hard to say I mean I have made some purchases but just not any big ones I've got uh, I've got you know some money sitting on the sidelines for should things go lower so i can just again and i'm not going to just dump in like you know if all of a sudden chain link makes it down to here that doesn't mean all right i chuck all my money into it that's just probably where i'm going to have a buy order set for some and then i'll leave some cash in case it comes down to around about here where it's been a number of times before now i don't see that happening and in all fairness, I don't see this happening either. I think this line will hold. This is just a healthy, you know, correction for all the coins before they're going to start bouncing to the upside. We are still early in a bull market, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. So I expect this to continue uh, its trend. And again, Chainlink has basically been going up uh, for, for quite some time. Now, Synthetics Network. I did buy some Synthetics Network. And we can see it is still uh, pulling back just ever so slightly. I think I bought it yesterday. I can't remember the price I bought it for uh, against BTC, but it has lost a little bit. But I think it's only like maybe 1% or 2% it's lost. And I am waiting to see if it is basically done with all its retracement because we can see for quite some time it has been falling against Bitcoin. And we can even draw in some trend lines. Well, let's get some trend lines going. All right, we can see there was a bit of a trend going on here. Now we'll change this one to red. And this one is going to be white. Now we can also draw in another trend line. So we can see there's been a little bit of a, a downturn uh, against BTC. It's been well outperformed, but it came down here and it went below, you know, some old previous uh, resistance and support and it quickly pushed back up. Now I think it's just simply going to come back down and test it before it goes higher. But again, I'm not going to set my buy for exactly on this point because it might, might 
excuse me, it might not make it, make it to this point. And this is pretty close. There's not really a whole lot of difference between here and here. You know, if I was trying to leverage trade and all the rest of it, yes. But I simply put uh, bought some because I'm looking at these charts going, I think this line's going to hold. We can already see it wick down here and tested it and pushed back up. And it's basically got, you know, some sort of fairly good support in and around this place. That's not to say it can't go lower. But it just looks like it's probably going to push out above to the upside again because we got over. It was a fake out, pushed down below, and now I think uh, come during the week we should be able to push out and start to push higher. But again, all of this is going to be negated if Bitcoin continues to tumble, and it could. So this is all, you know, it's a guessing game. Anyone who tells you that it's not a guessing game uh, is a liar. Yes, you know, they call it TA, but it's still a guess. There's nothing that definitively tells you this is what it is going to do. It is simply a guess, and we can probably even fix this line up a bit here. So let's go down so we're catching all the wicks. And there we go. Didn't really change too much. But anyway, this to me uh, looks like a bit of a, a bull flag. It's been descending sort of channel and it's flirting with this line. It's come down again, but I think it's going to break out to the top and then start to break out and go higher. But again, it is completely possible that that doesn't happen. This is all really based upon Ethereum. But I mean, let's have a look at the kind of retracement this has done. So this is our peak and this is our low. So it's already done a 74% retracement. I've spoke about this before. Uh, you know, average sort of retracements from altcoins are about 70%. And this is a 70, you know, they range anywhere from sort of 65% through to around about 85%. They can be a little bit more, they can be a little bit less, but generally, you know, 70, 75% is a healthy retracement. I think that's exactly what Synthetics uh, has done. It's done a 74% retracement. It's now bounced, and now it's going to start to break its way out of here. And look, we could go sideways for a little while. I think this is the, the sort of medium line. I think, you know, if it gets down to here, it's a good buy point, not financial advice, my personal opinion. And then we start to finally make our, make our way up again. Now, ETH against the US dollar. This is still holding strong. Uh, nothing's changed. And again, this has been, you know, this is the trend line here and has been for a long time. We came down and tested it and we pushed up high and now we're starting to come back. And I think we're going to come down and uh, get pretty close to testing this again. So I think it's entirely possible that we get down to, I think it'll probably happen more around here. So it's entirely possible that ETH gets to 400 and sort of 50-ish dollars in the not too distant future. No guarantees in life. Again, you know, we, we're going to, this is be going to become invalidated at some stage. It just hasn't so far. So we might simply start to rock it up on Monday from here. We could drop down. But this is kind of the average price line around that 400. It's been holding for a while. So again, it's, it's possible that this gets invalidated and we come back down and we test the $400 level. I don't see that happening, but it's just something we need to consider. We always need to have that what if plan. Well, the what if plan is you have some money on the side. Take some profits every now and then, or you know, do your dollar cost averaging. Uh, and again, don't put all the money in the dollar cost averaging, might be a way. So if you've got 50 bucks a week you can put into the markets, put in 45 or $40. So you've always got a couple of dollars extra lying on the side for when there are some good dips, you go, yes, awesome, thank you very much, I'll take that. And again, my personal opinion, not financial advice. Now, ETH against BTC, I brought this chart up the other day, we can see it seems like this line uh, seems to be holding at the moment. Now, we are hovering around underneath it a little, but it looks like it's kind of holding. So, you know, could ETH be ready to make another move against BTC and start to move up? Or could it simply come back down uh, and retest some old sort of support levels? So that's this red line. I would be a little bit concerned, and again, not the end of the world, but I would be a little bit concerned if ETH fell below this red line but that's not the end of the world. And again, this is just against BTC. That means, you know, BTC could go uh, on a big run uh, and that would obviously possibly push this down. But if BTC goes on a run, uh, other things can generally go on a run as well. And particularly if Bitcoin travels sideways for a while, you know, get ready for some really big pumps from the altcoins. Uh, that is generally what happens. 
But again, no guarantees. All right, lucky last, Bitcoin, here we go. All right, we can see it was a 17% retracement. Okay, here's where we were. This is where we got to on the cycle high. And we came down to the cycle low, 16.9%. Let's just round it off and say 17%. It was close enough. Uh, and again, this is on the daily candle, so you know, I might be fractionally off. So we can just say 17%. 17% is a good retracement, and we're already in the fourth day of a retracement. So one, two, three, four. And again, this day isn't over. It's really just you know kind of in the middle. And what do we have here? This is a bit of a spinning top. This is generally indecision. We can see another one here, indecision, uh, indecision. And a lot of the time, especially if there's been a lot of downside pressure in a bull market, it can mean it's ready to start going up again. But not always, here's one. Uh, it was going up, but then we had indecision after a lot of green, so it's probably gonna go lower. But again, there we see some indecision, but after a kind of slightly downtrend, and it went up. And you can go back and see these uh, on other times, but look, there's no guarantees that it goes up or down. But for me, there's been a lot of downside pressure and we had a little bit of indecision there. The market wasn't sure, are we gonna push up? Are we gonna push down? Uh, and again, we've got to wait and see what this daily candle does. Does it push lower or does it maybe push a little bit higher or have a real big breakout? Or just do we have another one of these until sort of Monday comes and the markets start back up? But again, so this is Saturday. This is Friday, Thursday. Now we even got the sell off starting on the Wednesday, but look, the really big one was the Thursday. As I said, a general weekend retracement can start from a Thursday and run all the way through to Monday. It's usually kind of done by Monday morning once the markets start, uh, unless you know it's in just a bear market. If you're in a bear market, then it won't matter what day. But weekend retracements, they are a thing. Don't let anyone tell you they're not. It's just not they're guaranteed and you can't tell exactly what day they're gonna start. But what I have seen and noticed is a lot of them do start around Thursday sort of evening, Thursday night. The weekend's coming, people want some cash and particularly in a bull market. So they take some out to go and spend or reinvest or whatever it is. And if it doesn't happen on Thursday, then it can happen Friday, Saturday and even late Sunday night sometimes. But 17% retracement, that's not that bad. For a 40% retracement, 30% retracement, that basically brings us back down to 13,900. It is possible we go here. I don't wanna confuse you and let you think that there's no way we're going down here. It is possible. We have regularly had 30 to 40% retracements in bull markets in previous years. That's actually only a 28% retracement, so it's not even quite 30% retracement. So totally possible this happens and we need to keep that in mind. So don't think that, oh, this is it and we're only going up from here. That is what I sort of think will happen. We're more than likely to continue to go up. The buying pressure from institutions is there. They will just start to buy more uh, come Monday and all the rest of it and they're probably still buying more now, but that doesn't mean that it's a guaranteed. There is a totally possible reality that we continue down to here. I would be you know, throwing all spare cash that I had at Bitcoin at $13,900. That's what I would be doing. I'm not telling you to do that. You make your own mind up. Really, if Bitcoin gets down to even sort of the $16,000 level, uh, I will be uh, putting more money in. Uh, if it gets down to the $15,000 level, I'll be putting even more money in and if it gets down to the $13,900 level, I'll be selling <laughs> anything that I can sell, you know, not things that I need to live and all the rest of it, but knickknacks and whatnot and yeah, whatever money I could find, I would be putting into Bitcoin at $13,900 if it were to come back down there. All right, that's it from me. Please hit that like button down below. Please hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate all of that. It helps me get my videos out. I'll be back with another video tomorrow and pretty much every other day unless something truly drastic happens and I just can't make a video. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but look, there are gains out there to be made and if you made some, good on you. And I'll see you next time.